welcome to the part 7 video of the unit solutions in this video i'm going to discuss about isotonic hypotonic and hypertonic solutions we have already seen in the previous video about the concepts of osmosis osmosis and osmotic pressure uh, there the movement of solvent molecules takes place from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through semi-permeable membrane and that process is called osmosis and that driving force or the pressure involved in that process is osmotic pressure. Now isotonic solutions are such solutions which are separated by semi-permeable membrane still there won't be any movement between the two solutions. That is because the two solutions have same osmotic pressure. So whenever two solutions have same osmotic pressure that is pi 1 equals pi 2 then there won't be any osmosis process involved in it even though there is a semi permeable membrane such a pro uh, solutions mixture or uh, solutions are called isotonic solutions. Hypotonic solutions the second case here a solution whose osmotic pressure is lower than the other if we have two solutions to compare and if these two are separated by a semi permeable membrane among the two whichever has lower concentration will be called hypotonic solution usually the word hypo means lower so a lower concentration or lower osmotic pressure solution will be called hypotonic solution here osmotic pressure and concentration these two words can be uh, used if the temperature is constant wherever the temperature is constant either the word osmotic pressure or concentration can be used okay anyway there is a small detail about this hypotonic solution a solution in which the cell swells the cell swells only when the external solution has lower osmotic pressure and internal solution or whatever present inside the cell has higher uh, concentration then in such case movement takes place from outside to inside the cell and therefore the cell enlarges or let us say the cell swells so when there is expansion in such case we call the external solution as hypotonic solution the red colored part in this diagram indicates hypotonic solution the third case is hypertonic solution the very word hyper indicates higher that is very simple to remember also hyper is like higher so a solution whose osmotic pressure is greater than the other okay whenever we have two solutions separated by semi permeable membrane the one which has a greater osmotic pressure or otherwise at constant temperature greater concentration will be called hypertonic solution in such case if a cell is placed a solution in which the cell shrinks the shrinking happens because the movement of molecules take place from inside the cell to the outside of the cell and therefore there will be shrinkage of the cell so the size of the cell decreases such a solution is called hypertonic solution so these are the three different types of solutions based on osmotic pressure explained okay isotonic pi 1 is equal to pi 2 hypotonic usually the one which is hypo will have lower that is pi 1 is lower than pi 2 and hypertonic pi 1 greater than pi 2 in all these three cases the reference is pi 1 okay the solution is 1 these are the indications with respect to hypo the other solution will be hyper with respect to hyper the other solution will be hypo so hypo and hyper are relative concepts this we have to keep in mind Well, now we will discuss about the last concept of this unit solutions and that is regarding the concept of abnormal molar mass. The colligative properties which we have seen earlier like the four relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point and osmotic pressure. In these four cases we have a chance, we have an option to calculate molar mass or molecular mass of a given solute 
m2 in all these cases is representing the molar mass of solute so it is easy if we know the value of colligative property we can easily determine the molar mass using these expressions if we try to calculate molar mass of different solutes say different substances in such cases there are some difficulties only in certain cases there are some difficulties to find out the molar mass the problem is some solutes when dissolved in a particular solvent may undergo association or dissociation so there are chances of molecular association and molecular dissociation when a solute is dissolved in a given solvent and it happens usually in case of electrolytes where molecules get dissociated and in case of certain molecules there will be association also possible maybe that is because of unstability or because of the intermolecular forces of attraction in such cases the calculated molar mass theoretically calculated molar mass will be different and experimentally observed molar mass will be different so to give an account for such differences whenever there is a difference in actual molar mass and experimentally determined molar mass we have to introduce a correction factor to all these colligative properties and that factor which we introduce in all these colligative properties is called van t hoff factor and that is our next concept in this unit van t hoff factor let us now see what is van t hoff factor this is very important because the van t hoff factor is introduced into colligative property calculation as the colligative property depends only on the number and not on the nature so whenever there is molecular association or dissociation in a solution we have to introduce this correction factor because it is going to change the number of particles in solution so let us see the details van t hoff factor is indicated by the small letter i to give correction in case of molecular association or dissociation of a solute in solution as i mentioned many times van t hoff factor gives account for the associated or dissociated molecules in solution it is also defined like this i is the ratio van t hoff factor is the ratio of observed value of colligative property observed when i say it means experimental to the theoretical value of colligative property so theoretical means calculated experimental by calculated values of colligative property and remember in all the colligative properties equations we have seen that the property and molar mass are inversely proportional in all the formulas you can see that uh, delta tb is proportional to m2 inversely similarly rlvp inversely proportional to m2 likewise we have colligative properties inversely proportional to molecular mass so this ratio will be reversed if i change these words i mean van t hoff factor will be the ratio of theoretical value of molar mass to observed value of molar mass so when it is molar mass the ratio will be reversed when it is directly colligative property value the ratio remains like this and the value of i depends upon different substances like this whenever the substance is a non electrolyte and non associated or non dissociated when there is no change in the number of particles in solution then the value of i is equal to 1 there is no change in the value of i that means the formula will be same when the substance is an electrolyte or which undergoes dissociation when there is a dissociation we can easily understand like the example of nacl okay in case of nacl there will be dissociation when this is dissolved in water so na plus and cl minus it means what imagine we have added 100 molecules of nacl into water and we are calculating colligative property value which will give you certain answer but practically when you observe it there are 200 particles in the solution so you will get a different molecular mass okay you will get a different molecular mass because of dissociation whereas in case of uh, i less than 1 the 
that is when molecules undergo association molecules can undergo association just like in the case of acetic acid acetic acid molecule forms dimers it forms dimer i am not representing hydrogen bonding or anything here simply to show dimer i have written two molecules here okay acetic acid acetic acid two molecules associate that means if i imagine if i consider uh, 100 molecules of acetic acid added into water or a solvent and calculate its molecular mass it will give an answer but there it gives answer uh, like there are 50 particles in the solution because two molecules going to combine inside the solution okay so whenever association happens i value is less than 1 whenever dissociation happens i value greater than 1 when it is a non electrolyte or non associated non dissociated the i value remains 1 this is about the mantoff factor and in each case in each formula we have to multiply the equation by i i'll give one example where we consider p not minus p by p not is equal to w2 into m1 by m2 into w1 into i this is going to be the formula like this even delta tv finally into i delta tf into i pi into i okay that is the conclusion and using mantoff factor we will get the correct molecular mass of the solute so this is all about the theoretical part of the unit solutions for the numerical problems and solutions please watch the next video which is going to be completely numerical problems based thank you for watching